Dear Mr. Rector, distinguished guests, dear students, on behalf of Rector Office and students, uh, we would like to welcome you in the capital city of Ukraine, Kiev, and to our alma mater, the Russian Chenka National University of Kiev. My name is Gana Tolstanova, and I am Vice Rector for Research of the Russian Chenka National University of Kiev. And today I will moderate our meeting. Our main goal today is to gain students insight and exchange their thoughts with the delegation of the representatives of European Union countries on topics Ukraine's European perspective and views on countries. But now it is my great pleasure to give the floor to our director, Professor Volodymyr Dubrov, for the welcome speech. Floor is yours. Thank you, dear Professor Kostana. Uh, your Excellencies, dear distinguished heads of delegations, dear guests, dear students, it is a great honor for us to be here at the Russian International University of Kiev in our main building, also known as Red Building of Public University. We have to have a main city in this strong uh, When we in Ukraine have not expected to experience the state of war in the 21st uh, century, unfortunately, it is unreality. We are grateful to you for your courage to visit Ukraine in this difficult time. We admire your decision as to come to a country which experiences elevated alerts, uh, security checks, curfew, and blackouts. Your example is a proof that gender is not the condition of life. It is a state of mind and inner strength that is crucial for a human being to demonstrate an outstanding behavior and real leadership. We in Ukraine have been living in the conditions of war of war for several months. But at the same time, have we had a talk in our mission that the Russian Chinese National University of Kiev had been pursuing since 1878. We provide education and conduct research. Education is not the future, research is our development. As Nelson Mandela once said, education is the most powerful weapon uh, which you can use to change the world. We are proud of other people, brave men and women, who are doing the impossible for other countries to sustain. Many students, teachers, and researchers of our university join the resistance to the unfair and unjustified aggression. We have lost. Several members of our community have paid their lives to make it possible for us to continue education and research here in Kiev. It's our obligation now to do everything possible to help the young generation, survive the war, gain education, and to rebuild Ukraine from the most secure and strong world. It is unique opportunity today to celebrate the unity of the Ukrainian society with the world. This European values of political opportunities and universities that draw our people to choose the right path and regain its proper role in the European family of nations. We are proud that today our students have this chance to express the feeling of the moment and understanding of the future. Their motivation and vision are the best evidence of the fact that Ukraine and its educated and intelligent society is the value added for the European community. I am excited to be a witness of this world in meetings of the high dignitaries of the European Union with our students. Our students get instilled by bravery and heroism of Libya and Alaska. Our Mesonite students who was killed by the rocket attack on her native city of Harkiv. Massachusetts Institute of Technology has initiated Julia's Dream, a research program to support Ukrainian high school students, especially for mathematics. And recently, the Kiev City Council has renamed the street of our university campus after Julia Zdanowska. Our students are also inspired by the example of many graduates of our university. Like 
Magdalena Gazowska, Zesja Zefiut Nadal Wilner, Minister Strajk Państwa, Minister Ola Stefania Świna, a ja mówię, Wilhelm 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 Ola Stefania Świna, Święty Zyklet Wielkiej Instytutu Internacjonalnego, ale Święty Zyklet Minister Dmitro Kulawa, Maja Znanie, Ambasador Sosnow w Ukrainie, Ambassadors and other finance Ukrainians who help spread the word about Ukraine and its legacy around the world. Dear Excellencies, we are grateful for your position towards the role of universities in the development of equal opportunities and better status of girls and women in democratic societies. Thank you for your attention and, and I wish you a fruitful and insightful meeting and discussion today. And last but not least, Many thanks of all brave defenders of Ukraine who made possible this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, <coughs> Mr. Rector. You have raised an important issue in your speech. Today we get experiences never wanted by us but we are left with no choice. In these circumstances, your point that gender is not a precondition of bravery, but is a state of mind and uh, inner strength has a special meaning, of course. And in this context, uh, it is now my great pleasure to invite our students to introduce uh, themselves as we agree and according to the agenda for our meeting, uh, they will uh, briefly introduce uh, themselves, they uh, say their names uh, and uh, also uh, they say uh, from which uh, department fac faculty they are and after that um, they uh, told me secretly that they would like to say something and also some of them uh, have several questions uh, uh, to you. So I think we can, since it's so uh, as I understood, uh, informal agenda, just to exchange the ideas, maybe they can start uh, with their, uh, their short talks and after that just question and answer session if you don't mind. Yes, do you agree? Okay, so uh, Daria, just uh, introduce yourself and one by one. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Daria Shepakova and I'm a senior year student uh, of the Institute of Law. Um, I study legal support of the resolving of economic disputes and uh, I would like to provide legal support on business in Ukraine after our victory. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Dayan Yerova, and I'm a third year student of Institute of Law of the Russian Chester National University of Kiev. Uh, in future, I would like to connect my life with science, and I see this activity as a way to build a peaceful society. Thank you. Good evening. 
first and foremost, I would like to emphasize one more time. Thank you very much for your courage. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you very much for providing this, uh, this uh, opportunity for young ladies uh, to meet you. Uh, my name is Melissa Chile. I'm a third year student of uh, Faculty of Economics. My specialty is accounting and taxation. And unfortunately, as you know, taxation is one of our Perhaps the most difficult problems. I am now at the start um, stage of studying and I have got quite a lot of initiatives how to change some interests at least. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, firstly, good evening. Uh, my name is Anastasia Dupanich and I am a first year student at uh, Economic uh, Faculty in the Russian Chenko National University of Kiev. Firstly, I want to thank our guests for your support. And secondly, I want to uh, thank you uh, for devoting your time for us. It's so precious. So uh, thank you. And we are very glad to welcome you in Ukraine. Good evening, everyone. My name is Yunus Vasilina. I'm of the first grade of the National University of Tarasha uh, My specialist is business economic, and I'm the future employer in, uh, one, in my country business and to build more trade here. So thank you and it's a big pleasure for me to be here. Thank you so much. First of all, thanks so much for coming and thanks for the award given. Uh, I am a second year student at master's program at the Institute of Law. Well, basically I study in this brand building. Currently I study private law and especially I'm interested in human rights, especially rights of women and you work with medical law and reproductive rights. Thanks. So, good evening everyone. Uh, thank you for coming in Ukraine. Uh, my name is Anastasia Gutbenko. I'm a third year candidate of Military Institute of Tarasovchenko National University. Uh, my specialty is military international relations and, of course, my nearest plan plans for the future of the is to defend Ukraine. Thank you. Good evening everybody, um, my name is Diana and I'm a future military journalist, but now I'm connected to the second year of military institute. Uh, first of all, I'm uh, so honored to be here. Uh, my name is Anastasia Volokhova, but all of you can call me Stasia. Uh, I'm uh, in my uh, third year uh, getting a degree in psychology uh, at the uh, National University of uh, Taras Shuchenka, uh, Faculty of Psychology. And uh, I would like to work in the family psychology field. Thank you. Yes. And hello, uh, I'm Valeria Nalidi, and I'm the second year candidate of the Military Institute of Shuchenka University. And my specialization is uh, international relations, and I'm very thankful for this meeting. Um, good evening, my name is Polina and I'm a first year candidate of Military University. So I represent the military part of this uh, union. I'm a cadet and a future officer of Armed Forces of Ukraine. Uh, good evening everyone, my name is Irina Nikiforova and today I have the honor to represent the Institute of International Relations. I'm a third year student and in future I see myself first of all as a proud citizen of Ukraine, of a free, democratic and European country. And that is why I want to devote my efforts to the strengthening of my motherland, to the development of its international prestige. I'm interested in foreign policy, international security, terrorism prevention and conflict resolution. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Diana Bruretz and I'm glad to see you here uh, today. I want uh, uh, to say I'm a third year student of Institute of International Relations and first year student of, uh, of Institute of Law of uh, Transition University of Kiev and I also want to work on the prestige of our university and our state. Thank you. 
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Elena Petrosian. Uh, I'm a third year student of the uh, Institute of International Relations and a uh, first year student of the uh, Military Institute of uh, Russia National University of Kiev. Uh, and I'm also um, an assistant to the Consul of Armenia in Ukraine. And today it's a uh, truly honor for me to be here, especially now, uh, especially today when my whole country is under the constant threat, under the constant danger. This uh, event today and the opportunity to be here is a truly delight for me. Thank you. Uh, good evening, my name is Anna Mosnitz. I'm a third year student of the International Institute of International Relations. I'm taking a specialization of international relations. And my area of major is uh, international organizations and multilateral diplomacy. So in the future, I would like to develop professionally in this sphere, and it's my pleasure to be here in such a strange day for our country. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, and uh, right now we can move uh, to our uh, next item of our agenda and uh, <coughs> just. Uh, uh, I know that uh, students would like to say uh, some words on the topic of today's uh, meetings, uh, Ukrainians, European perspectives and views of the country's future. So, uh, who would like to say something? Just uh, please raise your hands, okay? Uh, uh, Niki Faravarina, please. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I avail myself of this opportunity to thank all of you for joining us today and for the unraveling support of Ukraine. Uh, I would like to start our talk with discussing the challenges we are facing today. Uh, obviously, number one priority for Ukraine now is winning this terrible war and becoming an integral part of European society, the European Union and NATO. And um, I believe the first and the most crucial steps in this direction will be connected with preserving our safety and developing a completely new foreign policy. We have to make sure that Russia will be able to start a new war and destroy terrorized Europe. And I believe that the end of this war will lie at the beginning of a new system of international relations. Uh, as we all know from history, every system has its own characteristics and its problems. So I think the main challenges for Ukraine today will be to have working and reliable security guarantees to prepare our society, our ordinary people, our youth for European integration and to make our foreign policy and our diplomacy as efficient as we can. And I would like to ask you, what would you say are maybe three main challenges for Europe now? Maybe reviving the economy after the pandemic of COVID-19 or do you believe that nuclear safety is still a pressing issue or maybe is it just a part of history of Cold War? Thank you. Uh, thank you uh, very much, Irina. Uh, are there any other uh, uh, comments? Anastasia uh, Chimney, please, close yours. Yes, thank you very much. As I have already mentioned, I'm a student of accounting and taxation. Taxation is one of the most, the most uh, I don't know, difficult problems in our country, unfortunately, during the whole its independence existing. And uh, I have got uh, a proposition. I had a very interesting, uh, not very interesting, but very sad life experience of being a, a refugee uh, during the war for four months in Poland. And I mentioned a very uh, interesting that were made of these taxes. I really like them. I really like how uh, they function. For example, uh, I have a vivid example about their uh, income tax for young people. They don't pay it uh, before they are in the age of 26. And I think that there are a lot of taxation uh, initiatives during, uh, among the other European countries that we can inherit. So we need to send our Ukrainian students from different uh, fields, from economics as well, in order to gain this practice. And after these uh, short internships, we need to uh, apply them in real life. It is one of the biggest uh, problems, believe me, as I have already... Uh, my dream was to explore the West of Ukraine, and this summer I was had this, uh, this opportunity. So I explored it, and concerning the taxation, we need to make some, uh, some reforms, we need to do something during the war, after the war, and during the other period of our existence. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much. And Anastasia, maybe you have already an idea how to solve this problem based on your experience. Uh, as I have already mentioned, uh, I uh, have studied, and I'm also studying uh, how to uh, are in Poland and in our neighbor countries. Uh, for example, why Poland? Because they supported me a lot. I really thank you for this country and for all countries who support Ukraine and Ukrainian refugees. Uh, perhaps we should have some short-term internships of our students from our university, from other Ukrainian universities. For approximately, I think that three months would be enough for us to figure out what should we do, what should we change, how should we change this, and to apply in new life. Uh, I think that uh, I think that the European Council could support this idea, of course, for sure, and we will be really, really grateful. Thank you very much, Anna. Uh, thank you, Anastasia. You have just right on it. Okay, uh, who else would like? Okay, uh, Anastasia. <laughs> uh, thank you. I would like to mention the importance of program, uh, progress you've had uh, in the topic of women rights. Uh, in the latest years we had um, the amount of charity and educational programs uh, in, uh, significantly uh, increased uh, and one of the latest um, achievements uh, is of course the adoption of Istanbul Convention in Ukraine uh, and we see uh, where Europe has come uh, in this topic and we uh, also want to adopt it in Ukraine and we want to uh, move uh, in this di direction and uh, I really hope that uh, Europe and Ukraine will walk hand in hand as um, I think we all can agree we have a long way to go uh, and we will go this way until we achieve total equality for men and women, uh, until we achieve security and women around the world as human beings. And <laughs> as you can see, uh, my colleagues here, I'm sure you have no doubt in Ukraine it will be the case. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Anastasia, uh, you raised uh, very important uh, questions uh, and uh, I think uh, especially in the uh, auditorium that we have some bright, brave female students here. Um, maybe um, we have the representative from the Military Institute of our university. Maybe you would like to comment on this issue. Yeah, thank you. So uh, I will talk about the sphere of defense and security uh, because we are the military. I'm uh, so interested in this. So, uh, first of all, uh, the most important task for us for today is to win. To win in this horrible and huge war. And uh, to be patient this way is hard and uh, it will be long. But uh, with the support of international partners, this way will be uh, more successful for us. Uh, of course, uh, after the win, there will be Heart, uh, there will be restoration and rebuilding of Ukraine. And uh, of course, uh, this means that these hard times for Ukraine, they, are, they are will not be finished after the war. So, uh, we really expect great cooperation of Ukraine with European countries uh, in this sphere of uh, collective informational and uh, cyber security, of course, uh, of Ukraine being a European member. Also, uh, taking into account the uh, background of Ukraine uh, in war with Russia uh, since 2014, and especially after the 24th of February. We think that uh, we can offer a lot for European Union, uh, especially uh, talking about innovations in security and defense issues. 
so uh, I would say that uh, we want to be co-founders of a new modernized flexible security system that uh, will be able to respond to all challenges uh, taken into account of what we faced with uh, from our neighbors. So thank you. Thank you uh, very much, Anastasia, and uh, I would like uh, to say uh, thank you for all the military institute because uh, we have a lot of students um, who would like to go and defend our country despite their young age, and we are really proud that we have them and they are part of our uh, university. And, uh, I think uh, we have uh, a lot of questions related to law when we talk about uh, uh, the harmonization of uh, the uh, Ukrainian governments with the European Union and uh, you know, here we have a lot of representatives ladies uh, from the Institute of Law as I understood maybe you would like to comment uh, also on the uh, topic Okay, uh, not Anastasia, uh, Margarita, okay. Margarita. You were the Minister of Justice of Ukraine as alumni of Institute of Law. So you have many, many uh, wonderful students in this institute. Many, uh, uh, many future ministers. Okay, thank you. And uh, first of all, I would like to make some small statement. And I really appreciate European support at these tricky times, and especially uh, in the educational field. Because nowadays Ukraine faced with the lots of challenges in this particular area. And just after the COVID pandemic, pandemic uh, the war began, and all our lecture centers were held um, fully remotely. But even now, in these hard times, we're trying to develop ourselves and find new opportunities, trying to develop our knowledge, um, to fill the gaps we made during online learning. And I know that so many schools are held now concerning different law questions. And now we are witnesses of creating absolutely new law area. It's military law especially for Ukraine, it's law of the war conflicts. And personally, I really want to go study somewhere in Europe or maybe um, in the United States just to acquire some knowledge concerning these questions, to become closer to European society and to understand um, how we can become more closer to Europeans and to rebuild my country after the war. And as a question, I have um, this question is how how many challenges we um, face after the uh, when the war ended, and how we can rebuild our educational system, and what should we do? Maybe you will have some advice in this. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you, uh, Margarita. Uh, Comment something on the uh, uh, topic of the presentation, or we can move to the question answer session because I have you raised already a lot of questions. Probably some of us. Okay. Thank you so much. Maybe it's up to us uh, to say something uh, on all these questions uh, which uh, were already raised. But I would like to start by thanking you for being so inspiring, for being so positive, for being here. Uh, and um, building the future of this country, but also the European future. And that's really why we also thought it is a good idea as a delegation of eight women European and foreign affairs politicians to come to Ukraine to send a strong signal and to shed light on the question and issues uh, which uh, concern especially women and girls. And uh, it's really inspiring to hear you and I have to say 
very openly, we are coming from a spot where a missile hit the commercial center today. Uh, and it was uh, the last meeting we had before coming here, and it was a hard moment for all of us. The three people are dead. We saw the bodies of the three people, eight are injured, and um, it's a hard cut being here now, but on the other hand, we see that there is a future, and for that, uh, I would like to convey my big thank you to all of you. To the questions, um, I would say it's hard to answer all of them. If we had the answers, I think um, we were not needed <laughs> at the European level and also at the national level. Uh, you, you are raising the right questions. I'm not a specialist, uh, not, not low in uh, taxation, uh, and also not in military service, as I'm coming from a country which is a neutral one. But I'm a specialist in criminal law. Uh, and I'm happy to hear that at least two of you uh, want to engage in the field of criminal law. Uh, I was a criminal judge in my former life before becoming a, a politician. And I can only tell you it's the most interesting field you can go into. So go ahead <laughs> and, and work with that. And, and being a professor is maybe also very nice. I have never reached that level, but I think it's really um, good to be engaged in that. I can't answer all the questions, but maybe it's up to the others to comment on the questions. Okay, and please, Anna Lindemann. Thank you. Yeah. And apologies, I had to step out of the room for, for one second before, but I heard um, some of your points and then the question of what should you do to rebuild the country, and my answers go into the politics. <laughs> because, you know, I'm the Austin as politicians, and politicians have, in general, and surely in Ukraine, it's not very different, a very bad reputation. Or is it okay? Okay, the states probably here, you're quite proud of your leaders these days, no? But um, I can tell you that really nothing changes and gets done unless you also work for it yourself. And I just wanted to share my, my story also because I became a member of parliament at the age of 19 uh, in Germany. So younger than I think all of you are, right? So, because I really had the, uh, the wish only to, to talk about all these issues of cyber security, of education, of what we could do here and there, and how we could um, uh, reform the country, uh, in, in our case, and uh, here it would be rebuild the country. Um, but I really wanted to actually sit on the table where these decisions are made and make my voice heard, particularly also for the young generation. So, I think it's really, really important that many young people with so many bright ideas about the future go into, into politics. And I also um, really like the sentiment that I heard, um, I think it was from you saying that, that the EU can actually benefit from Ukraine, right? Because we, all, we often talk now about the EU uh, uh, accession process of Ukraine as if it would be something that sort of only Ukraine benefits from. And, um, and it's actually both ways. And, and I just said that in, in, in uh, an interview for, for, um, for German news outlet as well, that, that actually you know, we have to be aware that we can learn from your courage, we can do, learn from the way you defend our common European values here, freedom, democracy. Um, I think that, that gives a lot of impulse and, and we invigorate a lot of the debates also in, 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 uh, in countries and so so I think in that way we can benefit and then indeed also from your experiences now in fighting disinformation, in fighting cyber attacks, in fighting attacks in general. I think um, that's something uh, that, that we can also learn something from. Uh, thank you very much and uh, I would like to press uh, the words uh, uh, on the rate. Yes, uh, good evening. Uh, I'm really happy to see so many smart ladies here in front of me. Actually, you're asking questions and advice from uh, this side of, uh, of this round table. But, but actually, well, I think that we all will, will agree that we can learn a lot from you through your courage. Um, well, there are actually explosions in the city, but you are sitting uh, in the university and actually asking such a no, uh, existential and very, very, very uh, deep-rooted questions, uh, really my respect. Uh, I'd like to take the question that was asked about 
three challenges uh, in, in Europe. Uh, I will answer uh, a bit differently than uh, maybe you expected, but uh, you are in academia, you are trained to think conceptually. Uh, and I can reveal a secret, I'm also uh, professionally involved both in politics and academia. So, uh, my answer is following. Uh, actually, um, I look at, uh, actually at the international system from the point of view of democracy. And but we can look at, uh, at Europe from the same point of view. From, uh, I see it as a good balance of three elements. Uh, and those three elements are mutually dependent, and in ideal situation, they are they all three are in good shape. Namely, uh, the element of values and norms. Uh, the second element is the security, and the third one is economy. So when these three, these triangular relations are in shape, uh, everything is good. Answering your precise question about challenge, if you can look at the element of values and norms, I would say that uh, in Europe we face the same problem uh, we actually experience globally. Uh, um, namely, I'm talking about the, uh, the fragmentation or risk of disruption of international system that is based on the rule of law. We see it everywhere. Uh, also, uh, the war in Ukraine is also one of the examples, but we can uh, actually uh, find evidences around the globe. Uh, if we look at the second element, security, uh, the war in Europe definitely is the main challenge right now. And uh, if you look uh, on the element of economy, I would say that, yes, uh, uh, we must achieve real uh, energy independence and energy security in Europe. We must be able to recover our economies after the pandemics and all the uh, consequences of the war. And third, uh, to be able at the same time to work toward the stability and we must uh, in Europe to be able to return to stable growth. So, this is my conceptual answer. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I see that Nicola here. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you very much. I totally could echo what the colleagues already said, uh, but I was the whole time thinking about your question, so what is the biggest challenge for the moment? And I think everybody would have answered it nine months ago totally different so we're dealing with climate change rule of law and other questions but now it's clear, clearly uh, especially coming back from this side where we saw the three dead bodies uh, on the soil um, and this terrific war and um, when i looked uh, over your presentations i mean you have everything here on that table working in interprofessional teams um, to prevent wars maybe to end it, whether it's by negotiation or by uh, force. And um, when I'm looking back as a young woman in Germany, I mean, there was discussion a lot of people thinking we never need an army again, especially after reunification of Germany and Europe. And I entered in politics because I wanted to have a closer European Union, more multilateral treaties, um, the respect for human rights, female rights all over the globe, and now we have the war in the heart of Europe. So I think we need all these branches of your university and of your experiences and, and engagement um, to build up peace again. And I think reconstruction in a physical manner will be a huge challenge, but maybe the biggest challenge will be reconciliation. So how to overcome all these mental wounds uh, within our societies. How to reach out to all kinds of nations to make clear that international order is not something which can be stripped from the table like Putin tries to say for the moment. Um, I was together with your vice speaker of the Behova Garda just some weeks ago in Jakarta to the P20 summit. And we tried to reach out to so much nations 
um, of Africa, of Asia, to just discuss with them that the problem we see here, that this war of aggression against every international rule is not only a problem of Ukraine or maybe Europe, but that this is a problem of the whole world society. Because if such international rules are not respected, this can happen to every African, Asian, Southern American country. And then the rule of the strongest will go over the rule of law. And I think we should all stand up for the rule of law and make it uh, understandable all over the globe. So have more partners who care, not only on this continent, but it's clear for the European Parliament that we stand with Ukraine, fighting also for our freedom, uh, whatever it takes. And this was also the reason why all these strong older women, ladies, are today here and very happy that you took the time to discuss with us. Uh, thank you uh, very much. And uh, uh, I would like to pass uh, the course to Daniela Gittman, please. Thank you very much. And I would also like to thank you for coming, uh, for meeting us tonight. I'm really impressed on your level of good English and your good will and determination. I think Ukraine is on very good hands uh, with you uh, alongside the uh, world. Uh, what I need to tell you is that today we have met with the two speaker of your Rada, who she told us we cannot survive as a nation if we do not educate our children. So, as we also see, that education is the main pillar of the advancement of the country. And when we discuss about what is to be done, how can we advance and secure the future of our country, uh, I will tell you from the beginning that indeed, right now, this war has definitely changed our life, our generation life, your generation life, and we need to find some solution in order to put order in this uh, house. So I will take it step by step. First of all, uh, of course, this atrocity needs to, uh, to come to an end, with Ukraine prevailing, with Ukraine uh, winning this war, ensuring the world that uh, when you are right, when you have strength, and when you have determination, and you have brave children like yourself, uh, nothing can stop you in winning against uh, a monster, I would say a monster. From what I have seen today uh, with the bombing and with the shells, uh, I, I can't uh, find any other kind of word on that. Secondly, of course you have to start the uh, reconstruction process and you need a national plan. The, uh, the sky is the limit and I'm happy that each and every one of you will be useful to rebuild this country because we need engineers, we need doctors, we need uh, uh, military, we need everything when we rebuild the country from the scratch. There is not yet from the scratch, but still there will be challenges ahead and it is you to, to, uh, to respond to them. Thirdly, uh, I need to tell you that the reform progress really uh, has its own rhythm. I come from a country uh, when uh, the revolution started I was a student like yourself and I thought that, you know, oh, so we have liberated from the communist regime and the change will start as of tomorrow and everything will be possible. Then a very wise man came on the television and said it will take you 25 years to change mentalities and you will still not be there. And he said it's crazy, no, it's not, it cannot be true. Progress, reform, mentality needs time and generation and need endurance and you are called to continue this effort until it is done. So don't expect that the change will come uh, as of tomorrow. Uh, we need uh, together to stay together, you need to enhance your resilience and of course it is up to us also to exchange uh, the uh, the, the views with you, to support you, to speak next to you, and then to, uh, to uh, welcome you, uh, welcoming you uh, both in the European Union and in NATO if you so uh, wish. Uh, I always said, and we all said uh, at, the, uh, at the press conference that Ukraine is definitely part of the European family, and it's only a matter of time 
uh, until you will join us at the European table. That being said, uh, of course, I would totally share what Nicola told you. Maybe it's too soon to discuss that, but reconciliation is important. So if you want to have an advancement, if you want to have um, a real bright future where all um, the students like your younger, like your youngster, like you will come together and can turn the history page at a certain point of time, reconciliation has to be taken into consideration. Uh, and of course I talked about resilience. Uh, of course we have a, a European uh, Euro-Atlantic Center in Bucharest, it's called ER. Uh, we will be definitely very, uh, uh, very uh, quick and very responsive to share our knowledge on how to enhance resilience on security. Uh, and of course, I would definitely encourage the exchanging, uh, as uh, one of the colleagues mentioned, the exchanging of students, because you need to um, uh, to open to the world. But the world needs to understand you better, understand your challenges better. Uh, and I'm not talking about Europe. I'm talking about other countries where the narratives on the uh, dark side have arrived and they have convinced them that, uh, uh, that the truth is not the one that we perceive together. Uh, so as, as much as possible openness and meeting people and exchanging and people-to-people -people contact will definitely, will definitely help. Of course, I would be honored to uh, uh, organize some uh, student exchanges uh, from Romania. We have already students of yours that have been hosted in our universities. And I think they are doing fine. And I think that they would be also thrilled to have you as, uh, as um, uh, their host in my country. Uh, last but not least, I would also say that um, uh, when it comes about coping with the future, uh, of course, it is important to stay anchored in, in, the, in this um, uh, current present and that you can always count on countries like ours that are definitely committed to help you through the end, to stay with you until the end, until we will finally say this is over and now we can start rebuilding and reconstruction and we will be there for you. So please have the courage, again, uh, continue this good work. Stay on the shelters when the alarm comes. Please stay in the shelters when the alarm comes. And uh, let's hope that we will definitely uh, meet again sooner in order to see how we can start the deconstruction of the country. Thank you. Um, thank you uh, very much. Thank you very much for the invitation. And uh, uh, I'm really uh, sorry, but time is running uh, quickly. And, uh, we are approached the closing ceremony of our future, but uh, uh, to the end, first of all, I would like to say a big thank you for sharing your experience and thoughts with other ladies, and I am sure that this motivates them very much to work harder uh, for their better future. And uh, using this chance, I would like to say a big thank you to all our Ukrainian partners, colleagues and friends, because all Ukrainian people feel their this support. Um, you gave us incredible support and unprecedented help, which once again proves that Ukraine is Europe, and only together we will be. Thank you very much. <laughs>